Okay, in this video, I'm going to use R to create bar charts and clustered bar charts. I'm also going to do something called a Pareto chart, mainly because I want to have a little bit more control over what my bar chart looks like. I'm going to use some data from the Titanic disaster, and here's just a summary of that data. The class, I had crew 885 members, and then first, second, third classes. Age, I just have adult and child sex, female and male, and survived 1,490 did not, 711 did. So the first thing I'm going to do is just paste in some code here for a simple bar chart. You can see, see I said counts equals table class, so I'm taking the variable class the counts are a table of class and just puts the numbers into a frequency distribution. Then a bar plot of those counts and I just put in the title and the labels and so on. And that's what I came up with. I just preferred if I could have found some way to get these in order. It took me a while, but I did find a way. It's, here it is, and you can have all of the code there. So the first thing I did was I installed a package called QCC, load that. So I've loaded the Q, installed and loaded the QCC package. Then I'm just going to use table class to tell me the frequency distribution for class, 885 crew members and so on. So class counts is now an array that's concatenate or combine, and I just put these in descending order with the 885, then the 706, and so on. So all I've done there is created a new variable called class counts. Then I'm going to give those some names. An order is important on these, and I'm just now naming those new variables uh, from the class counts to be the crew goes with the 885, third goes with the 706, and so on. Now I'm going to use something in the QCC package called Pareto chart, and what a Pareto chart does is it just orders the categories from largest to smallest. It's used a lot in quality control in looking at number of defects and that kind of thing. So idea is to focus on the things that are most important that have the highest frequency. This is I'm just using that in this context to get my classes in order. And so you can see my largest class is crew, followed by third class. You can see there's about 900 there and so on down the line. A few more people in first class than second. And these are the cumulative frequencies. So here's the cumulative frequency when I just have crew, then when I add third class, when I add first class, when I add second class. Anyway, I thought that was a nice little chart to have. And the code is available on the website. The bar plot with everything in order, and this is based on the class counts that I manually entered after I got the table up here. Okay, now I'm going to create a clustered bar chart, and I'm going to look at the class and who survived. Someone survived as the other. And you can see here that on this side is, are people that didn't survive and this side people that did. And if you were a crew member, your likelihood of dying was pretty high as it was if you were in the third class. Still people in the first and second that died, but you had a better chance. If you were in first class, you had, looks like maybe a 60 percent chance of survival. In second class, maybe about a 
40% chance. If you were in third class, I'm just making a judgment here, it looks like you had about a 25% chance of survival. And in the crew, maybe also something like seven, a 25% chance of survival. So if you were a passenger on the Titanic, it sure would have been nice to be traveling first class. And here's what it would look like if we changed the order of the variables from class survived to survived class. It's a little bit easier now to see that in the crew, many more died than stayed alive. And then you can look at first class, second class, and third class as well.